With us now from Washington, Phil Mudd, a former deputy director of the CIA's Counterterrorism Center and the FBI's National Security Branch. Good morning to both of you. Uh, John, again, clearly this is a big victory, but clearly there's a lot of threat that is still out there. Well, there is, because they stopped one plot in motion, but the bomb maker is still there. There are others who will step up for a suicide mission, and of course they've lost a source inside the organization. Do you assume, Phil, that there are other sources and that this is not the only source that Saudi intelligence would probably plant inside? I would assume that's the case. If you looked at what's happened in the Arabian Peninsula over the last eight or nine years, the Saudis really stamped out al-Qaeda in Saudi Arabia starting in about 2003, and a lot of the Saudi members of al-Qaeda went down to Yemen. Some of them want to go home, some of them are tired, some of them have families back home in Saudi Arabia, and those are the kind of guys, made men in the organization already, who could serve as double agents. So, so that then is how you get someone in, because on the surface, it's, it's interesting how you get this person in and they get to the point where they are actually the person carrying the bomb. I think that's right. I mean, it, it, it sounds easy to get somebody in, find somebody who's sympathetic, insert them in the organization. My experience is that's extremely difficult. What you want is someone who's disaffected with the organization. Again, maybe someone who's going home, seeing that his friends are starting to have families, realizing that his life as a terrorist is going nowhere, and he starts to say, what's the way out? And the way mm -hmm. out is to go to a security service and say, I'll serve as a double agent if you give me a life afterward. So what happens now to the guy who was the informant? Well, there is a big payoff that comes with extraordinary risk to go inside undercover, and they will gather up that individual, his family, they'll go to a neutral site. He'll be debriefed for a long time, but in the end, there's going to be a big payoff. We're talking about in the seven figures, um, mm -hmm. and he'll be relocated with his family. You pose the dilemma of losing a source, uh, but having to meet the threat of a direct attack. That seems to be an easier choice to make than might otherwise be. You could not let an attack go forward, could you? No, I mean, in some level, it's a no-brainer, but after it, it takes so long to get a source in there and to figure out ways to get that information fed out. So there's always a temptation, and I'll defer to Phil on this, but there's always a temptation to say, well, maybe there's a way we'll be able to follow that bomb, track the flight, and so on, but the risk factor is just too much. Phil? Well, you have to, when you're sitting at the table running an agent like this and watching this threat develop, you have a simple priority, and that is to ensure that even if you want to destroy the organization, you don't put American or other lives at risk. So the choice isn't that difficult. If there are lives at risk, you've got to lose the source. There is, though, and I'd close with this, another shoe to drop, and that is when does the bomb maker go down? My question here wouldn't be simply, did we stop the plot? My question would be, did we get enough information to stop the plotter? And that's the bomb maker who's still out in the field. Uh, when you look at this, Phil, finally, there is a question of the cooperation between Saudi intelligence and the CIA. Do we assume that there's very good uh, coordination now between the CIA and other intelligence agencies? No, I wouldn't assume it's very good. I'd assume it's excellent. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you, when you sit there and have to deal with potential threat to citizens, whether they're in Europe, the United States, Saudi Arabia, any place, you'll talk to virtually anybody. If the balance is going to talk to somebody and maybe let some information out, maybe risk a leak, or potentially put an American life at risk, that's an easy balance for a decision maker to make. You're going to talk to people. In my experience with the Saudis, is they're great partners. Mm. Phil, my John Miller, thank you both.